Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Production Focus. If we just have a starting look at the US 30, you can see we had an incredibly volatile session yesterday. In fact, the US 30 and most of the global markets were uh, having a very torrid morning, um, dropping off quite significantly, then to rebound, uh, but then to still finish quite negative. So the US market in particular managed to rally up but then come off towards uh, 5 p.m. UK time and we posted quite a negative candle there again. Now we've slightly managed to uh, move upwards this morning um, but there's not very much in the way of any kind of support resistance anywhere nearby here. So we're just kind of floating in the middle of nowhere. And um, today is the final part of the FOMC meeting due at 7 p.m. UK time. And everybody's waiting to see if they're going to remove uh, any comments about keeping interest rates low for a considerably long length of time. And that's going to be indicative of, apparently, if the US are looking to raise rates in the middle half of next year, which could have quite big ramifications to the markets today. So. The market's probably going to be relatively flat until we get closer to that point, as uh, if they don't raise rate, if they, if they retain that, that statement within the FOMC uh, statement at 7pm today, um, that should give a shot in the arm to a lot of the equity markets and uh, should cause the dollar to sell off uh, relatively aggressively. Um, but we'll have to wait to see tonight if that's going to go ahead and happen. Looking at the UK, uh, slightly different matter, you can see how, how horrible, uh, how horribly volatile that session was, how strong the rally was towards the end of the session, only for it to come back down again. Now, it looks to be that we're trying to have a little bit of research today as crude oil West Texas seems to be re-stabilizing around about $55. Um, but also most of the equity markets have, have been that little bit higher. So we do have a, a potential res resistance around about um, 6350. We're a good bit away from there right now, but it looks to be that equities are trying to have this um, slight move to the um, to the upside there. The German DAX struggling a little bit this morning as well as the US 30. So looking at Japan 225, and obviously that, that Japanese yen had been very popular yesterday, which uh, caused a, uh, a lot of pressure to come on to uh, Japan 225 as people were buying the yen as a safe haven. We had a very strong rally this morning, as there's been a little bit of a reversal in there, going from below of probably about 11550 uh, all the way back up to 11750. So we have quite a strong reversal there. Um, probably looking at a potential short term broken support now acting as potential resistance, probably close to 170. 49 if, uh, if that market continues to move up to the, uh, to the upside. So looking at uh, dollar yen, just about poking its head above 117 spot 36, uh, which is a broken support and I expect to act as resistance. We've not broken above it yet, um, but yesterday was such a bad day for, uh, for, for dollar yen. Good day for the yen, bad day for the dollar. Uh, and we almost reached uh, next potential support at 114 spot 74, but that didn't happen. Um, can we get our, can we break and close above 117 spot 36? We'll have to wait until tonight, possibly, to find out. So crude oil, West Texas, uh, bouncing around potential support 5485. We've talked about this so much for the last couple of sessions. There's nothing more really to um, to offer here. We do have a doji formation at the bottom end of a downtrend. If there's going to be any short-term bounce in West Texas, now's the time, really. Um, but I think it's all about the FOMC now taking a little bit more center stage. If I actually just jump on to here for a second, and we have a look at dollar ruble, which obviously everybody was talking about yesterday. Um, one of the biggest intraday swings I've ever seen. Uh, it was down 10% at one point, it was up 17% at the other, but it seems to be stabilizing slightly. When I say stabilizing, it's still incredibly volatile, but uh, we did pretty much reach, I think it was 79 spot 89 was, it was the high of the day. Now we're already down a couple of percent again, uh, taking below 70, um, back to 67. Now this is still like an incredibly high point, um, but for a lot of traders out there, this is. Um, what a lot of people will be looking at to get an understanding of what Russia is going to go ahead and do next. So certainly we're at the low of the day already um, and the pressure is uh, is back on but it's got obviously when you move up so aggressively as this uh, you've got a, a long way to come back down so um, perhaps currency speculation are really driving that up quite a lot. It's already down 4.4 percent today. So I'm going to look at gold. Gold again was so volatile. This candle is absolutely uh, horrible if you're looking at technical analysis. Uh, it sold off and it's quite surprising because people are buying yen as a safe haven, but they didn't want to touch gold, maybe because of the FOMC. Um, we did spike all the way above uh, 1218, only to get pushed all the way back down again. And in fact, we're trying to have a little bit of a move to the upside right now. We're trading below both moving averages at 21 and 55 period SMA. We've almost got, we've got a crossover, a negative crossover on the slow stochastic. The RSI is negative. We've got a crossover in the MACD. Uh, gold's not looking too good from a technical perspective. Uh, and obviously tonight's FOMC, if they have removed that they're going to, keep interest rates low for longer, uh, gold's pretty vulnerable. Um, 
to more pain. So moving on to Euro dollar, Euro dollar had a real shot in the arm as um, people started to unwind uh, a lot of their dollar positions. Obviously, loads of traders were long, dollar ruble, um, and when that, that became time to sell out towards the lunchtime area yesterday, when it really began to, uh, to sell off, uh, that had a knock-on effect on many other markets as well. I think um, dollar knocky uh, and, uh, and knocky Swedish krona were also very much in focus yesterday, um, especially the knocky got hit quite hard. Um, but the kind of side effect of that was people were buying euros in a big way, and that allowed your dollar to get one spot 2579, uh, albeit it's a little bit in the back foot at the moment, still in the middle of two ranges with next potential support one spot 2367. So let's finish up with cable. Um, Cable uh, tried, well, actually did manage to break 157.43. Uh, it was a false breakout. It didn't manage to close above that with any um, sort of conviction. We're down a little bit again this morning. So economic data-wise, we do have uh, UK uh, unemployment claims at 930. Um, then we have uh, CPI data in the US at 130 UK time, followed by the weekly petroleum sales. So make sure you don't forget about that. And then obviously remember tonight, 7 p.m. UK time, it's a FOMC policy decision, but that's not the real big bit of news. It's a statement that comes straight away after. And if we fast forward then on Thursday, you've got German IFO business data, UK retail sales, US employment change figures, so a fair amount of economic data, and you've got the Philly Fed numbers as well. So today and tomorrow, we're looking like we've got a lot of macro data that could stimulate the markets. And if we look at Friday there, we've got more UK data, but nothing of real significance. We've got public sector net borrowing, nothing that great. So today and tomorrow, lots on, and uh, certainly plenty of activity in the markets. Keep your hand on the chart for them as ever. Making sense part of your later going forward and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.